welcome to this video. Today I'm gonna give you a tour of my newest Google Sheets meal planner. This is the premium edition and it's the third version that I create. This is going to be a very quick tour, but if you prefer to watch a longer video, I'm gonna leave the link to that in the description down below. I will go a lot more in depth into every single section and in this video I will just very quickly show you the basic idea of how this works. So the very first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come into the item list tab and you're gonna customize your list of food items and your list of common household items. So this is going to be completely blank and you're gonna fill this out with your own information. Once you do that, you're gonna move on into the dish ideas tab. And this is where you're going to add your breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack ideas. You can also rename these categories. And the way you rename those is you can come into this settings area and you can pretty much change any label across the entire template in the your translations column. So anything that you see here, any label, you're gonna be able to customize that very quickly. So once you fill this out with your own ideas, you're gonna move on to your dish ingredients tab. And this is where you're going to assign ingredients to your dish ideas. So this dropdown is going to be created automatically using the dish ideas that you entered here. And then your item dropdown is also going to be created automatically using your list of food items. So you're gonna take some time customizing it at the beginning, but once you have this customized, adding things into your list is going to be really easy because if you start typing on a dropdown, it's gonna start suggesting items from that dropdown list. And then you can very easily use the arrows on your keyboard to select an option. So that's why I love dropdowns and that's why I have you customize them first because they will make it easier for you in the long run. So once you customize your item list, your dish ideas, and your dish ingredients, you are going to come into one of your five weekly sheets. So this template is meant to be used monthly, and you're gonna come into one of your five weekly sheets, and you're gonna be able to select meals from the dropdown, and the items you assign to those meals will automatically load in this list down below. And as you can see, meals that have items loaded automatically will show this label right here. If you add a meal that doesn't have any items assigned to it, then nothing will happen. And you can manually edit this list right here. So this will be the final list. Items will be loaded automatically, but you can also add items manually here. And this list will be updated accordingly. So if I wanted 10 bananas instead of one banana, I can add nine more bananas. And I have 10 bananas. If I want to add apples, since those weren't added automatically, I can do maybe two apples and then my list updated automatically. Now you can also decrease quantities. So let's say I already have carrots for that day. And if I wanted to get rid of those, I could do minus two carrots. So this is the final grocery list for the day. And then this is the way you can manually edit this list. And you get one table that looks like this one for each of the seven days of the week and in the end your final grocery list will be pulled together automatically joining every single final list for every single day into one list in which items will be unique and that will add up quantities automatically so this way you only have to think in terms of each day and your final grocery list is created automatically you also get this section in which you can add items that are not necessarily tied to a specific day. And then you get a separate table in which you can add items that you included in your common household items right here. And I added those separately so you can look at that without having all of your food items get in the way. So whatever you add here will also be altering your grocery list. As you can see, I just have to type a few words and then I get the suggestion down below of what item it is that I'm looking for and I can just use my down arrow to select my item without having to type the entire thing. And once you have your final grocery list, you can choose to sort it by item or you can choose to sort it by category. Now, one very cool feature that I also included is you can alter quantities from your dish ideas. So let's say I saved raw veggies. So I added one cucumber, one bag of baby carrots and one lemon. So if I come into one of my weekly tabs and I select that from my snacks section, raw veggies, I'm going to get one of each. But if I wanted two of each, because let's say 
me and my partner were both having the same snack, you can choose to save quantities for one portion and then edit those quantities directly on every single day. So if I wanted that to be doubled, I can do two. If I'm having 10 people over, I can do 10. And quantities will be multiplied by this number. You can also choose not to load those items automatically. For example, if you're having leftovers from the previous day, so you can just select this skip option and then those items won't be loaded automatically. And if for some reason you do not want any of your items to be loaded automatically at the moment, then you can just uncheck this box and nothing will be added automatically. And you can still use this manual section right here. So this manual section is useful to add new items that weren't loaded automatically to increase and decrease quantities on this specific day. And whatever you do ends up editing this area right here. And this is your final grocery list for the day. You can also choose not to alter quantities here and just wait until you reach this point and then you can alter those quantities here. So for example, if I do not want those two apples, I can just do minus two apple and then I got rid of those. Now, this is an extra feature that I included that is completely optional. If you want to learn more about how this works and why I added it, you can watch the longer video. And then you get these five weeks that look exactly the same. And one of the things that I got asked a lot is if you could join these grocery lists together. And some people shop every two weeks, some people shop monthly. So I created this extra tab and everything that I'm going to show you after this point is additional features. You don't have to use them at the beginning. You can start using them once you feel more comfortable and you start thinking about other things that you might want to do with the template. And this is where this will come in handy. So for example, if you wanted to join together week one and week two, you just have to select them using these check boxes. And then both of those lists will be joined together in this area. You can join together as many weeks as you like out of these five weeks. And then you can also alter this list using this area. So for example, if I don't want these bananas, these 10 bananas, I can just do minus 10 bananas and then that's gone. If I want an extra six carrots, so I end up with 12, I can add six more carrots and then I ended up with 12. The same thing for the common household items. And you can also start your template on any day that you want. So it can be Monday, Sunday, Friday, it can be whenever you want. All you have to do is double click in this cell and select the very first day in which you want your planning to begin. So let's say I like my weeks to start on Friday and I meal plan on Friday for some reason, then you can just select a Friday as your first day and your calendars will update accordingly. So now your meal plans will begin on a Friday. And you also get this calendar right here that will be showing this area for each of your five weeks. Now, if you scroll to the right, you're gonna find this mini expense tracker. This is completely optional, but pretty much you're gonna manually fill out your budget for each of these weeks. And then whenever you make a payment, you're gonna add it here and you're gonna assign it to one of those weeks and then that will get added up here. So for example, if I had a $100 payment for week one, I end up with 150. That's adding up these two quantities and it's showing me that I went above my budget by $50. So this is completely optional and it's just some tiny feature that I wanted to add to help you out. These lists that are created automatically are automated, completely dynamic, which means they will keep shifting around as you are adding items, as you are sorting those items. So I create an additional tab in which you will have full flexibility over editing it manually, making all the changes that you want to make manually. So once you get this, it will be completely blank like this. And then you can come into any week, you can select your final grocery list, you can copy it, you can come into this area and right click, paste special values only, you paste it here, and then you have this list that you can change manually, that you can scratch, you can 
delete rows, you can do whatever you want and you have complete freedom over this list and you can just duplicate it as many times as you want. So it has a lot of features, but you don't have to use them all at the beginning. You can start very simple by just creating your list of items and you don't have to start off with your entire list of items. You can just start off with enough items for a couple of weeks, enough meals for a couple of weeks, just so you get used to it. And as time goes by and you start adding more ingredients and more dish ideas, this is just gonna get easier and easier. I do have a longer video in which I walk you through each section more thoroughly, but I wanted you to just have a very general idea of how this will work in the end. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me and I will be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching.